Along this whole course also, I bought a house. You can imagine how much money is still coming in. I should be happy, but what does it benefit man? If I gain the whole world, I'm still losing my soul. It benefited me nothing. When I bought a house, I wanted to be around my son so much. I said to my wife, let's just live together. Even though we're divorced, even though we're fighting like crazy, let's live together. Let's focus on you and I making this work for our son's sake. She moves in. We're still fighting. The money's coming in. I'd never encountered Jesus Christ. And one day after skating at the Van Skate Park, I run into a pastor there, Pastor Christian Asoy at the time. I was searching for the Lord. I was reading the Bible. I'd never met him. And he pointed me to this church, the sanctuary, which is where I attend today. When I went to that church, the pastor preached on Galatians, on my sin. He preached on Matthew 7, 21, that many will come to the Lord and say, Lord, Lord, and he'll say, depart from me, I never knew you. I'd watched all these Christians, supposedly, who didn't really honor God, didn't really lift him up, so it kind of explained that. At the same time, explained the state of my sin. The way was in front of me. I believed this Jesus was real. I'd realized that, um, I mean, I, I mean, basically, in a nutshell, what happened is I'd realized I'd been coming to God to fix my marriage and to fix my finance and to fix my mind. But through the scripture and through what Pastor Jay had preached, it was really an issue of my sin and the separation from God. I went to that church a couple of more times. I finished up my community service. I still wanted to end my life. I had scars on my stomach. I got into a bunch more fights. I was very aggressive. One night coming home from church, I remember just crying out and saying, this is it. I fought with my wife all that day. God, I'm going to prove that you're not real this night. I got into my office, sat down on my knees, cried out to God, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God of the Bible, God that says He so loves the world, God that says you'll take all things and, pass, and they'll pass away and all things will become new. Jesus that claims you walked the shores of Galilee with the apostles and that you're meant to be alive today and that you've sent your helper, the Holy Spirit, to help me. Please forgive me my sin. I cried out to God on my knees. My ex-wife's in bed. My son's two or three years old in bed. I'm crying out to God, forgive me my sin, forget this Eastern philo philo philosophy I've been following of Bruce Lee, forget this Buddhism and all these other faiths, you show up, I'll give you my life, I'll remarry this woman, I'll get baptized, I'll go around the world and I'll preach the gospel, I will give you this thing that I've so idolized that's made me who I am, I'll give you everything because I was a slave to everything else, and in an instant, I prayed for probably 20, 30, 40 minutes and in one instant I just felt the presence of God enter that room. I can't explain it any other way than this. It felt like energy entered that room and I felt something come over me and in one instant everything I was pursuing, I just knew it was real. Everything I'd thought about my whole life about idolizing Bruce Lee and treating people the right way and doing this and doing that, it was just all in my mind in an instant it was like, okay, look, all have sinned and all have fallen short of the glory of God. I knew I was a sinner. Wow, Lord, you've showed up and you've saved me. And in one instant I began to cry and I broke down. I began to just praise and worship God. My hands were raised. I was thanking Him. I called my sister. I couldn't believe that Jesus Christ had showed up in my life and saved me. I'd given a whole speech to the Lord about, you know, why is this woman I'm with like this? Why am I this way? Why do we fight? Why do we do this? Why is California so about clothing and this kind of car? Why is this life? I'm over this. You need to show up. And when I went to lay down in the bedroom next to my ex-wife and my son, weeping and in tears after just going from praying for 40 minutes to worshiping for 40 minutes, blown away by what Jesus Christ had just done, I knew I was saved. I sit down in bed and she sits up like a zombie with her eyes closed and began to speak for 10 or 20 minutes all the things I just prayed and then just sits down in bed like a zombie as if nothing happened. The next day I wake up and say, babe, isn't it crazy? We're going to save the Lord. And she goes, you're crazy. What? She doesn't even remember that she did it the night before. The next two or three weeks I'm sharing the gospel with her, telling her, you know, the, the doctrine of baptism, all the things I'd read and studied. Within three weeks, she's a Christian. And within six months, we're remarried. I get baptized. I'm going around the world today to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm a deacon at a church. And my goal now is simply this, is to share the love of Jesus with whosoever I may. In a nutshell, I mean, I guess 2 Peter 2.19 says, Man's a slave to whatever has mastered him. The world have mastered me. I was dead in my sin. Satan gave me everything. No, they were good things I can use for the Lord. It was all about me. I was divorced and suicidal when Jesus sh showed up in my life. I remember saying to my wife, you can have the car, you can have the houses, you can have anything you want. Do whatever you need to do. But the love of Christ that showed up in my life and transformed my mind in an instant, it's the exact same amount of feeling and joy in Him today that I have then. 
And the goal now is just to raise my family, is to use a skateboard for his glory and to continue to love that wife that now we're remarried to. Our son's nine years old, my daughter's two and a half, and my wife's due in two months with our third child only because of Jesus Christ. So I'm blessed.